This is Meet the Candidates. I'm Steph Whiteside. Today we are talking with Representative Patrick Windhorse, currently representing the 118th House District and running for the 117th, and Representative David Fries, who is running for the 115th House seat, currently representing the 116th District. Both candidates are unopposed on the ballot. For today's forum, the rules are simple. Each candidate will have 60 seconds to answer the question and should not mention their opponent in their response. Representative Windhorse, Representative Fries, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So both of you have already been representing the Southern Illinois region in the legislature. What would you consider to be the top issue facing Southern Illinois? Representative Windhorse, we'll start with you. Yes, thank you. I believe the top issue facing uh, southernmost Illinois is our loss in population. Uh, we have, in the, in the counties I represent, seen a significant loss in population just in the last 10 years. And if you go back uh, even several more uh, census uh, takings, then you'll see a even more significant loss. So that is that population loss is being driven by a few factors. Uh, some of it has to do with Illinois being uncompetitive with surrounding states. We see a lot of our young people when they leave for college not come back uh, because of lack of opportunity. And then we see a lot of young families in our area move to Paducah, Kentucky or Cape Girardeau, Missouri, simply because they view it as having a uh, better place to live or it's a more affordable uh, cost of living. So my goal has been to address that problem and try to make Illinois competitive with surrounding states, so we'll see people move back to Southern Illinois and we can we can thrive as a region. Thank you. And Representative Fries? Uh, actually, I, I would just say, did everything Patrick said, and, and I'll also follow up with an example. I, I know a uh, small business, uh, our border, my district borders uh, Missouri, and this individual owns a heating and air company and he represented to me that if he bids a job on this side of the river, uh, he typically gets beat out by competitors just right across the river in Perryville, Missouri. And the reason he does is because our workers' compensation insurance is so much higher than what uh, they, they pay in Missouri. That and liability insurance, uh, you know, with, there's no shortage of litigation in the state. So because of those, uh, he frequently loses jobs to somebody uh, across the river. It's very frustrating. We've got to be more competitive. We've got to keep uh, not only the businesses that we have here here in the state, but we've got to be uh, able and willing to attract new business. All right, thank you. Um, and we will definitely get into some more of that uh, in a couple of questions. Next up, people often feel that this part of the state can get overlooked in Springfield. What role does collaboration play in representing Southern Illinois, and how do you work with each other and other lawmakers to help better serve your constituents? Representative Fries, we'll go, have you go first this time. Um, I think there is that uh, feeling that Southern Illinois is frequently overlooked, and, and I understand why, because the, just the, the population, um, I was looking at some numbers. Obviously, a large part of the population resides in the Chicago Cook County area. Uh, because of that, they have the numbers uh, that represent their particular uh, constituency and that, that demographic. It's just, just the way the population works out. Uh, now, there are uh, instances where we do collaborate. You know, there are uh, now they're few and far between, but we do work with members on the other side. Uh, to try and get some bills passed to uh, benefit our, our area. I, I know I've got some economic development that I would love to get done uh, in our area, and I'm working actually with a downstate Democrat to try and get that accomplished. Thank you. And Representative Windhorse. Yes, thank you. Uh, first, as it relates to the representatives in our region in Southern Illinois, we all work together quite well. We have good relationships. Uh, we've uh, built those uh, over time, and and as a region, we tend to have a collective voice going forward in Springfield, where we're uh, able to have five, six, eight of us uh, joining together on on certain issues. But as it relates to uh, working across the aisle, collaboration is key. It, it's a really a delicate balance. The first thing is you, we have to make sure we're holding fast to our principles. We're standing up for what we believe in, 
and that we're a voice for our constituents. But then we also have to look for areas where we can work together with the other side, where it may not be a fundamental issue of principle, and we can uh, collaborate and work on issues uh, that will move our region forward. You know, there are some similarities in some of the issues we face uh, in Southern Illinois, in southernmost Illinois, uh, even with the city of Chicago or suburban areas, because they sometimes have a lot of the same issues. The key is finding those and working together. Thank you. How would you work with lawmakers at the federal level to make sure priorities for this area are prioritized in Washington as well? Representative Windhorse, uh, we'll go with you again. Well, it starts with communication. Uh, that communication involves us as legislators reaching out with our congressmen and women uh, to build relationships so that way when we pick up the, the phone to call them or we want to meet with them, there's already a pre-existing relationship that's there. And, and luckily, uh, we have those relationships with Congressman Boss and Congresswoman Miller in southernmost uh, Illinois that will uh, bear fruit when they're uh, in Washington, D.C., uh, there is also relationships that are built at the staff level. So uh, individuals who work in my district office, have uh, that district director has built a relationship with the uh, staffs of the other uh, offices, and they can deal with issues to help uh, solve problems. A lot of times those problems have both a potential state and a federal solution. Sometimes there is a uh, talking about infrastructure money for a project. There's recent infrastructure bill with the federal government. We've had state infrastructure money. It involves us having a relationship and uh, working together to achieve those goals. Thank you. Representative Fries? Uh, again, I'll just ditto to what Patrick said. I know um, I, I consider Mike Boss a friend. And anytime I have any issue, uh, I, I always reach out to him. He takes my calls. Uh, and if it's something that, where I'm busy doing something else, uh, my staff reaches out to his staff. We work really well together. We really do, uh, particularly on things, uh, VA benefit. I know that is a huge thing for Congressman Bost as, as a former vet. I'm a vet myself. Any and any time where we can work together, we, we typically do. Uh, it's just one of those things. We, we always, we're always pulling in the same direction. All right. Thank you. So moving on to more of the issues, we'll start with the economy. A new capital construction plan is bringing millions of dollars to this region for road, bridge, school, and other projects. Still, there are many areas where things like roads and sewers are in dire need of repair. What ideas do you have to help update those things? Representative Fries? Uh, update the... I, I'm not sure I followed your question. Uh, yes, sorry. Uh, updating the infrastructure uh, in the region, particularly things like roads and sewers, where um, there has been some money coming in recently, but there's still a lot of areas that are in need of improvement. Okay. Well, there's unfortunately because there's because those projects are never small dollar projects. I mean, they're always really high high ticket items. Uh, a good example is I've got um, in my district, Chester, Illinois. Uh, we're supposed to, uh, we're slated to get a new bridge within a few years. Uh, they're supposed to break ground, uh, I think next spring. It, lots of money goes into that. And, and Missouri and Illinois, they share that cost, you know, when, whenever there's a bridge. Uh, roads, again, another huge, huge, you know, undertaking. There's a lot of money that goes into that. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the local government, when it comes to sewer and, and water and things of that nature, they, they typically try and fund that themselves or they try and get grants. Uh, in a lot of the smaller communities, such like where I live in Redbud and in the smaller towns, they just don't have the funding to do that uh, themselves. They, they need to uh, get some more assistance, not only from the local government, but I think also from the federal government as well. Thank you. And Representative Windhorst. Thank you. I'm going to echo a lot of what uh, Representative Fries just said. Now those uh, issues uh, involving infrastructure, roads is kind of separate from other types of infrastructure, at least in Illinois, because we have the lockbox uh, constitutional amendment, which protects funds uh, for roads and bridges. There was the recent uh, increase in the gas tax. I voted against uh, that increase, but that money uh, is in a lockbox now that's going to fund uh, road projects. Uh, throughout the state and, and the Department of Transportation released its recent uh, five-year plan uh, going forward on how that will be spent. 
more uh, individual projects, uh, particularly around, around water and sewer, are often uh, for our cities and counties in southernmost Illinois, we're looking to the state and federal government for assistance because, as Representative Freeze pointed out, we don't typically have the budgets here to fund those on our own. So one thing that we could do as a state is make sure that of the tax dollars that are already being collected, that the local governments are receiving their fair share of that money and that they will be able to fund those projects. Thank you. Uh, continuing with the economy, recently there have been announcements regarding new or ongoing economic development projects in the region, like the Caro Port project and the Ren Lake renovations. Representative Windhorst, starting with you, what other types of projects would you like to see brought into the area? Well, tourism is an area, uh, that, and that's kind of piggybacks on the Ren Lake area, or Ren Lake project that was just announced. Tourism is an area uh, or an industry which southernmost Illinois is ready to thrive. Uh, Representative Severn, who's of course not on this call, is our Republican spokesperson for tourism. And he likes to point out that we're doing just a very small amount in tourism. We could do much more and, and really uh, benefit much more. So there are some projects. Uh, one that's been on the on the list for quite a while is a renovation of Fort Massac Park. That's uh, an idea in our project. Uh, making sure that we have our uh, parks uh, in southernmost Illinois updated and uh, ready to go forward and uh, making sure the money is there for those projects to move is important. That will help us build tourism uh, if we the parks are a main driver of, that, of the tourism industry in southernmost Illinois. You know, we have to become competitive as a, as a state, and that means that we have to have the ability to draw jobs and industry here to help um, make us competitive. Thank you, and we're gonna have more on that in just a minute. Uh, Representative Freeze, your response? Yeah, I would love to see uh, some money and funds get put towards historical landmarks. A great example in my district is Pyramid Art Home, uh, which is probably 30 minutes from where I sit today. Uh, that, that home has been uh, under severe disrepair for years uh you know going to prior administrations you know funding was cut uh and now they, they had bids they had the job approved and, and with with inflation now the bid's not good anymore so they've got to go through the entire process all over again uh and, and during this whole process they've they've got a roof that leaks on this very historical uh home and it's just sad it breaks my heart and there has to be a priority put towards these landmarks because if we don't we're going to lose them forever for future generations and we really really need to put those resources towards those historical homes or landmarks thank you so you've both alluded to this a little bit but illinois has a reputation for being unfriendly for businesses what would you do, Representative Freeze, to help draw more uh, industry and business to the area? I think for starters, uh, unemployment insurance. Um, and my understanding is what we, Patrick can verify this, we've got still unemployment insurance trust fund uh, underfunded by 2.3 billion, I think. Uh, my understanding, we had the money to do that, we didn't pay that. Uh, that bill's still, still gonna come due. So how's that gonna get paid? It's gonna get paid either by higher insurance, uh, unemployment insurance by employers, that's me, uh, you know, I, I plan unemployment insurance, or by uh, fewer benefits for those that, that may be injured on a job or, or uh, find themselves unemployed. So we, we really need to start there. Uh, next, it, it might be good to, to visit, you know, some maybe uh, litigation reform, you know, liability reform, tort reform, uh, those, those are two things that I think if we really put some, some time and effort into, uh, think about the best way to address those issues. If we can come up to with some reforms, I think would really help uh, the business section, sector. Thank you. And Representative Windhorst. Yes, just to echo again, uh, some of the things that Representative Freeze has said, uh, the unemployment insurance issue is, a, is an immediate concern and will potentially lead to uh, both an increase in taxes on businesses and a reduction in benefits on those who need the system. Uh, one area that we hear quite a bit is uh, reform of the workers' compensation system. There have been some advancements made. We need to continue to work to bring ourselves as a state more competitive 
to be more competitive with surrounding states. And then one that's kind of understated, uh, but we're beginning to see is uh, costs of energy. Uh, even with Illinois' high taxes and burdensome regulations, which we need to address as well, Illinois had always been competitive with its energy costs, and uh, we're, that is now changing. Uh, Illinois is going from a state that would export uh, energy to one that's having to import energy, and that's, of course, causing prices or costs to go up, which is uh, borne uh, by businesses, and that's going to cause them to have to choose to either increase their prices or uh, costs of or they're going to have to move as a business. So those are just a few things that I think would help businesses in our state. Thank you. On a more personal economic level, many Illinoisans are struggling with rising costs for housing, food, and other essentials. At the same time, social service funds have been depleted due to the COVID-19 pandemic. What would you do to help people be able to get the help they need? Representative Winhorst? Well, you, you kind of uh, tied two things together, and I will take uh, maybe both of them in this answer. Uh, first, the rising costs have really hit families uh, at the grocery store and at the pump. Uh, several Republicans have put together uh, some bills that would address some of the rising costs and fuel. Uh, that would you know, Illinois is one of seven states that charges us an additional sales tax on fuel above the gas tax. Uh, there'd be a way to either uh, reduce that or eliminate it in, during certain times. As it relates to social services, our state budget over the last um, three to four years has increased uh, payments for social services uh, each year. Uh, now, of course, the social service agencies always need more. They need uh, uh, ways to attract employees. In fact, that's one of the big issues they're seeing is trying to keep their wages competitive to have employees. But I believe as a state, uh, the budget at least is moving in that direction to increase payments for social services that uh, hopefully will eliminate some of those concerns going forward. Thank you. Representative Fries? Yeah. Uh, obviously, inflation is huge. Um, and I don't know what we can do on a state level. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of this is driven by, by national politics. Uh, on, on social services side, I can tell you this. Uh, I have a day job when I'm an attorney. I practice uh, still today. And I see uh, things, uh, we, do not, we do not have the social services here in Southern Illinois that, that uh, they have upstate. Uh, so I think one of the things that we really need to expand our social services downstate. Uh, mental health treatment particularly, I know we have a huge uh, drug problem, not only in our state, but across the country. Uh, I see it in my, my, my practice daily. We, we really need to address that uh, locally and we need to have social services locally where, where people aren't traveling, you know, an hour, an hour and a half for those services. That's one of the things I would love to see happen downstate. Thank you. Another area where families may feel squeezed is property taxes. What would you do to help ease the burden on homeowners? Representative Fries, we'll start with you. Well, we, we got to quit raising property taxes for starters. Um, and and it, it just, so where do property taxes go? A large part of that goes to funding schools. Uh, I know there's been a lot of discussion, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a freshman, but ever, ever since I got elected, there's there's been a lot of discussion about uh, how we're gonna fund our schools. And we need to change the formula uh, and not be, not uh, rely so heavily on property taxes. Uh, that's, that's where I think the first, the most important thing that we do is start to uh, figure out how we're going to fund our schools in a different way than, than rely so heavily on property taxes. Thank you. And Representative Windhorse. David's right. Uh, education is a primary driver of uh, the property tax bills uh, throughout our state, primarily in southern Illinois. Uh, as, as a state, we have established the evidence-based funding model to try to assist what are uh, termed tier one schools, which uh, do not have adequate school funding. The hope is uh, that by using that those evidence-based funding model, which is funded through state funds rather than property tax funds, that those property tax districts will ultimately be able to reduce property taxes. Uh, that is a long-term solution to a problem that hits every year. Um, and of course, we talked about out migration from the very start. 
uh, people leaving the state, one of the top reasons is property taxes. So we need to address uh, property taxes as one of the, those uh, criteria or problems that is causing people to leave. And the best way we can do that is to look at the way we're funding schools and that will allow school districts to reduce their property tax uh, levy. Yeah. Do, do, you, do you mind if I add something real quick? Um, uh, go right ahead. Yeah, just so so you understand what we're talking about is I've got in my district Baldwin Power Plant. Baldwin Power Plant is slated to shut down in 2025. Okay, when that does, the, the local school district is going to lose it. I wish I could remember the percentage, but a large part of its funding from that tax base. So a school that has been, been able to thrive to date is now, when that thing shuts down, is going to have to look at how is it going to fund its school. And that that's the struggle that we're facing. And, and that's why I'm saying that we really need to revisit how we're funding our schools. All right. Well, another legacy of the pandemic has been an increase increasing awareness that high-speed internet is critical for school, as we've been talking about schools, and also for people to go to work. What are you doing to try and help rural ac rural areas get access to broadband? Uh, Representative Windhorse, I believe you're up. I believe that's right, yes. Uh, rural broadband is uh, vital to Southern Illinois. That is a way we can bring ourselves into parity with the rest of the state. If we can achieve more connectivity, we'll be able to attract businesses and people to our area. And it's going to be, it's be, broadband is becoming utility just like uh, water and sewer and, and electricity is. So we have to have that. It's fundamental. One of the issues I see is that there is efforts by both the federal government and the state government to address uh, broadband access, but it, it is really a piecemeal approach. There are, are grants that are, are put out there. There are application processes that are um, achieved and then there will be a certain portion of a county or a city that receives broadband access. What I would like to see happen is a more uh, cumulative or total approach uh, to achieve that broadband access so that way it's not piecemeal. The other thing that we have to do is there's really a, not a good coverage map uh, to show where there is coverage and where there is not. The state, uh, one of the things I'm pushing for is the state to have a map that demonstrates where the coverage exists. Well, thank you. And Representative Fries? No, it, it's a huge problem. I saw it in uh, the school district where my kids attend school. Uh, it, it was during the lockdown and everybody was uh, attending class via Zoom. Uh, I know parents that actually drove to town or to the library uh, so they would have internet access uh, so the kids could do the schoolwork. Um, and and I, I've been to their house. They didn't even live that far out of town, which was which absolutely stunned me. Um, so, so Patrick's right. We, we've got to have, uh, if you want to call it a, a broad approach, a master plan, we, we've got to attack this uh, because it is. It is a, a utility now that everybody needs to have, uh, be it just like water and power. We, we need it, uh, especially given the fact that uh, a, lot, a lot of kids, they, they check in, even absent COVID, you know, they, they're they have to do stuff online. So we, we really need to make sure that, that we have a broad approach to, to tackling this. So everybody in the state has broadband. Thank you. And uh, this is going to be our last question. Uh, speaking of the pandemic, it may not be on the front of mind for people anymore, but it also isn't entirely over. And now we're seeing the appearance of monkeypox. What will you do to make sure Illinois is able to address public health emergencies that may arise in the future? Representative Fries? Oh, what am I going to do? I, I, first of all, I, I would love to see these type of instances or situations not become political in nature. Uh, and, and that's unfortunately what happened with, with COVID. It, it really did. It became political and then no one listened to everybody. Everybody was shouting across each other and no one heard what anybody else was saying. Uh, if we can get the politics out of it and, and we can rely on the true science of it, and here's it, politicians need to learn to say, you know what, I don't know. Uh, in, instead of trying to provide an answer to every question, just be honest with us and say, you know what, I don't know about this. I don't know about that. Uh, and, and I think that would go a long way as opposed to try, trying to provide an answer to appease it, either a, a section of the population or, or somebody, and then that that answer not being correct. 
Thank you. And Representative Windhorst. That was a great answer, Dave. I, I almost just like to repeat it uh, and say ditto, but I, I will add just a little bit to that uh, as we try to put the politics aside and, and admit, uh, have the humility to admit when we don't know something, which is I think what got us in trouble, uh, at least with the politi politicization of it. We need to make sure that our local health departments have the resources they need. Uh, you know, we have the state IDPH that uh, was overseeing the pandemic, but I, what I saw locally was that there was different responses in different health departments locally based on the resources they had. So we have to make sure that in some of the more rural areas, some of the areas with higher poverty, that those public health departments have the resources to help address it locally. And that way we can address it like we should as a state and every citizen has an adequate uh, response given to them. Well, thank you. And thank you both so much for joining us today. Thank Thanks for having us. And thank all of you for watching. This has been Meet the Candidates on WSIU with Representative Patrick Windhorst running for the 117th District and Representative David Fries running for the 115th. Tune in again next week for more campaign forums. For WSIU, I'm Steph Whiteside.